22-year-old woman publicly declares she is sick of the single life. Dozens of students, suitors offer themselves up as potential life partners, competing not only for her not disagreeable person, but for a fabulous cash prize. A 22-year-old woman named B.L. who has a very modest dowry, uh, 500 pounds would have been a lot of money, um, for somebody who was from um, the lower classes, but she's clearly uh, a genteel woman, so 500 pounds isn't very much money. And what she decides to do with it is um, she decides to put herself out there for uh, a tradesman, somebody who's already got uh, a business going, and somebody who's under 30, because, you know, uh, it, it would have been very easy for her to end up with a 50-year-old man. And the responses that I talked about uh, in detail, uh, one of them is a response from um, a parody of a drunk Irishman. And when my uncle is dead, I will keep you a coach. If you will have me now, I will tell you that although it was greatly believed, and that's all about the streets of London, I did neither murder or kill Kitty Fisher, <laughs> for she is not dead. And then the other response that I talked about was um, a man who uh, opens by saying that he has a good body and that a certain part of his body is better than most, most men have. And, um, that he really has plenty to do during the day and is now looking for something to do at night. How um, yes, close, uh, how many, how many <laughs> resonance I find between uh, this time and our time in terms of, you know, it's 1759, the Hardwick Marriage Act is a few years old, and these changes in marriage have made this sort of culture of anxiety around what's going to happen with single women, what's going to happen with women trying to get married through new methods, and the newspaper as the um, sort of engine behind all of this change, because you know a lot of the debates about the Marriage Act are taking place in the newspaper. Well, the state that it's in right now, I'm about to send it to um, a journal called 18th Century Life, and we'll see what happens with that. But um, the relationship to the rest of my work is pretty tangential. I work on the sequel. And so when I think of the pamphlet, London Courtship, as a sequel to this personal ad, then it definitely fits in with the other work I do, because the sequels I'm interested in are the sequels that kind of um, aren't what you would expect, that are unlikely continuations. And these letters are definitely unlikely continuations of the ad. So I think that's kind of the way it fits into my work more broadly. But